الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحد حد محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار we begin by praising allah we praise him and we seek his help and we ask for his forgiveness and we take refuge with allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil consequence of our evil actions whomsoever allah guides no one can misguide but whomsoever allah leaves to go astray no one can guide and i testify that allah alone is worthy of worship and that muhammad may allah's peace and blessings be upon him is the servant of allah the worshiper of allah and his final messenger after that the best speech is the book of allah and the best way is the way of muhammad may allah's peace and blessings be upon him and the worst of all the matters the worst of all the affairs are those things that have been newly introduced into the religion and every matter that is newly introduced into the religion of islam is an innovation a bid'ah and all of these religious innovations are misguidance all misguidance is going astray and all going astray is in the fire my dear brothers and sisters in islam and dear listeners watchers assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh i am going to be covering a series of talks about the topic a very very important topic is concerning the major sins my dear brothers and sisters it's essential that we understand that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator the lord the sustainer of all the universe has created you and has created me to worship him as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he told us in the quran wa ma khalaqtu al-jinna wal-insa illa li'abudu that verily allah did not create the human beings and the jinn except to worship him illa li'abudu actually means to know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have been created to know allah and so this is the really the purpose of our existence this is the reason why we are here this is the reason what this whole life is all about and that tells us that we come to know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through worshiping him and of course allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created many different creatures he has created a type of creation that worship him and they never question they never default they never go away from that worship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that creation are the angels of course but the human beings we are different what is different about us is that we have choice we have the choice to obey allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to disobey allah we have the choice to follow his commands or to disobey his commands was the angels they only ever obey the order of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they only ever obey the commands of allah but the human beings no we have the choice we can obey and we can disobey we can worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone or we can worship other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we can live lives like saints or we can be worse even than the animals that is something that is unique to the human beings of course the jinn also have a choice like us but the jinn tend to be and more inclined to be disobedient to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whereas we human beings we have been created with the fitra the natural inclination it's a part of our 
natural disposition, the nature that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, that we are naturally inclined to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so that is part of our being, that's part of our nature. Naturally, human beings want to worship the Creator alone. Naturally, human beings want to be righteous, they want to be virtuous. But of course, as a counterpoint to that, we have our nafs, we have our desires, al hawa And so our desires many times lead us away from that path of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, of course, there is not only our nafs, but there is shaitan, there is iblis, the one who has promised, who has promised, who swore that he was going to lead the human beings away from the straight path of Allah and that he was going to take whoever he could from amongst the human beings with him to the hellfire. That is what Iblis, what Shaitan has dedicated his entire existence to. And so these are the two things that lead us away from obeying our Lord, our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our nafs and shaitan. But we have, on the side of virtue, on the side of piety, we have the fitra, we have been given the aql, the intellect, and we have also been given guidance, revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has sent to us human beings throughout the ages prophets. And these prophets have shown us the way. They have shown us the path. They have explained in detail what it is that Allah wants us to do and what it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to keep us away from. What is the path of virtue? What is the path of vice? What is the path of goodness? And what is the path of evil? So those are the two paths, the two paths, the, the two ways that have been shown to us. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He created the hellfire. He said to Jibreel alayhi salam, He said, oh Jibreel, go and look at my hellfire and tell me what you think. So Jibreel, he looked at the hellfire and he came back. He said, oh Allah, I have seen your hellfire. And I think that anybody who comes to hear about it, they will never enter it. Then Allah surrounded the hellfire with temptations, with ease, with comforts, with luxuries. And then Allah said to Jibreel, now go and look at my hellfire and tell me what you think. So Jibreel, he went, he looked and he came back. He said, Allah, I am afraid that nobody will escape it. And when Allah created Jannah, He said to Jibreel, O oh Jibreel, go and look at my paradise. Tell me what you think. So Jibreel went, he looked at paradise, he came back, he said, Oh Allah, certainly anyone who comes to hear about paradise, they will definitely go to it. And then Allah surrounded the paradise with difficulties, with trials, with tests, with hardship. And then he said to Jibreel, now go and look at my paradise and tell me what you think. So Jibreel came back, he said, oh Allah, I'm afraid that nobody will enter it. And so this is the reality. There is the hellfire. If we hear the descriptions of the hellfire, any person, any sane person who uses their aqab, who uses their intellect, they will do everything they possibly can to avoid that torment. And indeed, on the Day of Judgment, when the people are being dragged into the hellfire, the angels who are guarding the hellfire, they will say, didn't someone come to you and warn you about this? And the people will say, yes. But we thought they were deluded. We thought they were misguided. But only if we had used our aql, if only we had used our intelligence, we wouldn't now be in the fire. And it's the same. If you hear about paradise, whoever 
reads the descriptions of paradise and you use your imagination to imagine what this place is like although in reality it is even beyond what we can imagine a person who is intelligent will do whatever they can to get to paradise so what is stopping us well what is stopping us is that the road to paradise is a steep road it's full of difficulties it's full of trials it's full of tests it's full of tribulations hardship and that road to hellfire it's wide it's open it's full of luxuries it's full of comfort and that's all most people can see they just see the comfort they just see the luxuries and even though there's a big sign saying this is going to take you to hell they're just drawn like moths to a flame to that hellfire and that path that leads to paradise just seems for some people to be too difficult and they can't project themselves to think about the ultimate result where truth is hidden and misleading quotations create confusion where truth is hidden lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion where truth is hidden manipulated scriptures and twisted facts emerge this very hidden truth creates false propaganda mayhem chaos disorder and turmoil in our lives and the world order but is there anyone with courage and wisdom what is the truth and who has the courage to expose it because it's your right to know the truth right watch truth prevail and lies perish in truth exposed by dr zakir naik tonight at 9 pm and repeat telecast at 7:30 am india on peace tv explore the options the options match the qualities assure the success success what happens at school or more specifically what happens inside the classroom the classroom the classroom good qualities of classrooms interactive challenging collaborative distributive focus student centered let's together examine the quality of education that is provided to our children to judge this quality precisely join me on peace tv join dr mandu mohammad in teaching at school next on peace tv so life is a test alladhi khalaqa al-mawta wal hayata liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala wa huwa al-aziz al-ghafur allah he created the death and he created the life to make known to manifest to make it clear which of you are best in conduct and he is the aziz he is the mighty and he is al-ghafur he is the forgiving so life is a test life death all the things that we see all those calamities that happen it's all part of the test to see how we are going to behave to see what we are going to do so alhamdulillah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us guidance and that guidance is of course that final guidance although allah has sent many prophets and he has sent many messengers and he has sent many books but the message of those prophets that came before has been lost it has been distorted it has been corrupted those books that allah sent before they do not exist anymore in their pristine and original form the only guidance that remains complete and perfect is the final guidance that was revealed in the quran to the final messenger muhammad may allah's peace and blessings be upon him and part of that guidance is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has warned us 
He has warned us and explained to us sometimes in detail about those things that will lead us away from paradise and towards the hellfire. Indeed, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, in a hadith that was collected by Tirmidhi, that there is nothing, there is not one thing that will lead you away from paradise towards the fire, except that I have warned you about it. And there is not one thing that will lead you away from hellfire and towards the paradise, except that I have told you about it. This is the perfection of this religion. This is the perfection of this way of life, this way of living that is Islam. Submission, surrender. The surrender of your will to God's will. The surrender of your desires to follow and to obey the Creator. Inna dina indillahi al-Islam. Verily, certainly, most certainly, the way of life with Allah is al-Islam. So we want to talk about sins. What are sins? Sins are those things that take you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sins are those things that will take you away from paradise and towards the hellfire. And so the whole topic of sin, of what constitutes a sin, of evil, of munkar, of fahisha, of idham, of adwan, these are some of the names that we find in the Arabic language for sin, shahr, evil, is another one, for example. So there are many terms and many words in the Arabic language for sin and for disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But all of them have the most important thing that it all has in common, the most important thing for us, really, as believers, is that all of those sins, they take you away from Allah. They take you away from paradise and they lead you towards the hellfire. Now, when we say that life is a test, there is something that is very important that I want to mention concerning the sins. You see, we don't believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden things for us because he wants to make our life Difficult. Absolutely not. And nor has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to do things for the same reason. Allah didn't say, do this thing because I want to restrict you and do this thing and don't do that thing because I want to keep you away from pleasures. No, we shouldn't imagine that at all. Anything which Allah has prohibited us from, anything which Allah has ordered us to keep away from, anything that Allah has told us not to do, he has told us not to do this thing because that thing is harmful for us. Either it harms us individually, so that individual harm could be a physical harm, an actual physical harm, for example, just very quickly. And we will be obviously going through these examples in great detail in the future lectures. But for example, alcohol. Alcohol has many, many physical harmful effects to the human being. So it is very clear from a physiological point of view, from the point of view of what alcohol does to the body of the human being, it's very easy to understand why alcohol is prohibited. So sometimes the harm is a physical harm. Sometimes the harm is a mental harm. So it harms the mind, sometimes the harm is something that will damage or interfere in the family life, which of course is very, very important. So if it interferes and it harms our family life, then that by its nature will strike at the very heart and the very root of the collective human happiness. Because human beings are not only individuals. One of the things, one of the, you could say, I would say very negative things that has come 
from the dominance of Western ideas is the supremacy of the individual. This idea that the individual is the most important thing and that human rights, for example, in the Western concept, begin with the individual. And it's very interesting that, for example, someone like Mahatma Gandhi, for example, actually contested this. He said that human rights don't start at the individual at all. Human rights actually start with the family. So the base unit of the human rights is not the individual, it's actually the family. So therefore, whatever protects the family has a higher status than whatever is the need of the individual. So the need of the family is higher than the need of the individual. And of course, in Confucian philosophy, for example, the need of society and even of the state is higher than even that of the family. So this idea of universal human rights that we see, for example, that is often put to us, the universal concept of human rights, is actually not that universal at all. Because different cultures, different societies, different philosophers, different thinkers from around the world have a different paradigm of what is important. So I mentioned this in respect to sins because sin could harm the individual mentally or physically, but it could also be something that harms the family or it could be something that harms the society as a whole. So the reason why something has been prohibited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because those things are bad for us. They are bad for us either individually or collectively. They could be bad for us physically. They could be bad for us mentally. Or, of course, they could be bad for us spiritually. There is nothing, my dear brothers and sisters, that Allah said, this is haram to make your life difficult. No, we don't believe that. Behind every order that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, behind every prohibition, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has laid down for us is a wisdom, is a wisdom, a great wisdom. And these wisdoms fall into two categories. Sometimes Allah has told us the meaning of that wisdom, the reason why this thing has been made haram. So sometimes Allah, he tells us, this is forbidden because of this, or I have ordered you to do this, because of such and such. And sometimes the wisdom is not given to us. And then in order to know the wisdom, in order to understand it, we have to apply our intellect. But there's something very important that you must all and we must all understand. That whether we understand and we comprehend the wisdom or not, the basis for us as Muslims is Allah has made this thing forbidden Allah has ordered us with this thing and we do something because Allah has ordered us with it. And we abandon things because Allah has ordered us to leave those things alone. And that is the root of Iman. It's not I don't eat pork because there are scientific reasons why pig is bad for you. No, I don't eat pork because Allah said it's haram, it's forbidden. That is why I don't eat it. That is the reason why I don't eat it. If I can understand and comprehend the wisdom behind it, well, alhamdulillah, that would give me more certainty, more conviction, and I will understand more clearly how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cares for every single aspect of the human being's life, even to the extent that he has told us what we should eat and what we should not eat. Even to the extent, my brothers and sisters, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us things concerning how we should put our shoes on, how we should relieve ourselves in the bathroom, how we should go to bed, that we even things like, my brothers and sisters, that we should blow the fire out, the candle out before we go to sleep, unless the mouse knocks it over and causes a fire. Subhanallah, even things like that. It is as if Allah did not want to leave a single thing except that he would warn us about what is harmful to us and what is beneficial to us. 
So we will be talking about these things throughout these series, my brothers and sisters, especially the major sins, because it is very, very important. May Allah guide you, and may Allah guide me and all of us closer to the truth. Please don't forget to listen in to the next episode of The Major Sins. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.